This is the final tool to type video installment. Throughout the videos and sessions, it's been my goal to give you the information you need to work effectively and independently in creating a font from your own hand. This information is not exhaustive, so I want to touch on a few things that may pique your interest and then answer a few frequently asked questions that may have arisen during the live sessions. If you wish, you can create a font family of your design. Suppose you want a bold weight of your font. This is best done from within the same font document. Each font is a master. Instances are made from these masters to create exports, the actual font files used in other applications. Here you can see I've created a second font, or master. Notice there are now two icons here, which I set up in the information panel. Technically, this is now a font family, although at the moment identical because I haven't done any editing of the second master. I can toggle between the two fonts as I work. I'm going to do a little bit of editing on the second master to make it bolder. Notice the red bar at the top. This corresponds to the red triangle in the glyph cells. This means that the two masters are not compatible for creating a variable font. It's nothing to worry about unless you want your font to be a variable font. So what's a variable font? It's a multiple master technology that allows you to create a family of many fonts from two or more masters. It's a bit beyond the scope of this workshop, but there are resources on the web if you want to explore it more. I forgot to mention, if you don't see a place to add weight to the axis, you'll need to go back to the font tab. Click on the plus sign to add a weight axis. Go back to the masters tab and assign the designated weights, in this case 100 and 500. To create the fonts in the family, you're going to need to create exports. Go to the exports tab and down in the corner, click on the plus sign and select add instance for each master. Notice that the weights you assigned in each master can be found in the access coordinates. Your font is now ready to export. Since this is a bold version of the font, I'll go ahead and select the bold instance. There's one more thing I need to do before I generate the font, and that is to give all of the letters extremes. I'll go ahead and select the entire font of each style and go into the menu and add extremes. Now the font is ready to be generated. Exporting a font is really easy. I'll save the font and then I'll go into File down to Export or hit Command E. I always use shortcuts. Once you've selected a destination, you simply click Next and Export Font. Now both styles of the font have been generated and you're ready to install them on your computer for testing. I'm sure you probably already know how to load a font onto your computer, so I won't cover that now. I'm running out of time, so let's get to the frequently asked questions. Can guides be named to make editing less confusing? The answer is yes. Here I'm adding guides and naming them in the information panel. The names of the guides show up on the far left of the window. Guides must be unlocked to have the option to name them. When working with glyphs that have components, it's best to have either all components or all paths, and preferably all components, to save the file size. It's always a good idea to keep your font files to a minimum size. By the way, you can create notes within each glyph, select the notes icon, and use the typing tool to create the note. When you look at the cell within the font window, you'll see a little notation call out. The alt feature is generated automatically, and it tells programs that use your font what features are available. Some Adobe products allow you to hover over a character, and a pop-up will show you what alternates are available. I may have mentioned in a previous lesson that I preferred to generate my fonts as OTF files. However, I've recently discovered that there are glitches in programs like Photoshop that has issues with 
showing some of the alternate characters. So I now generate all of my fonts as OpenType TTF files. The final question I have time for is, can you sell your fonts to the public? The answer is yes. There are numerous venues where you can set up an account and sell your fonts. Some of the large foundries, like Linotype at fonts.com or My Fonts, have a broad audience. The success of your font sales really depends on the style of the font and your ability to market your work. Well, that's about it. I'm so glad you could join me for these workshop sessions, and I hope you continue your journey in the world of type. I'm Rob Lusky. Take care.